I didn't. Um, has, That's so bad. I can't believe I just chuckled at that. Awful. Has, I'm going to lay out the most important thing I've ever laid out in, uh, in the Bill Simmons podcast. I've probably laid out more important things in the BS report, but I know for the Bill Simmons podcast, this is probably number one. You ready? I'm ready. Here's how Kevin Durant ends up on the Celtics in July. This is, how dare you? Go ahead. I should have known. What do you mean, how dare I? Go ahead. Are the Celtics the seventh best team in the NBA right now? They are. They're the seventh best team in the NBA. They have the seventh best record house. Congrats. They've won 14 straight games at home. They're going to end up in the high 40s. We're going to win our bet on their over-under. Knocking on wood. Don't want to jinx it. Knocking on wood. They have Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, Avery Bradley, and Marcus Smart, and Olenek. All under contract um, next year for, I think, like $27 million combined. Right? Very good. So fi- Very good. Five guys you can have in a nine-man rotation on a winning team. And Isaiah's an all-star. I mean, I- Isaiah's one of the best 20 guys in the league now. It's incredible, but it's true. The guy's like Tiny Archibald. Um, their cap space next year, if they got rid of Jarebko and they got rid of Amir Johnson, just didn't extend them, it's at like 30 million bucks, right? The cap's going to be like, I think at least 70. They have room for two max guys. They're also going to have a top five pick from Brooklyn. They're going to have a Dallas pick that's going to be in the 13 to 16 range. They're going to have their own pick, which will be in like the, uh, the low mid twenties. They have two more Brooklyn picks in 2017 and 2018, and they have a Memphis pick that becomes unprotected around 2021. So they have a ton of assets. Um, Durant. They could get Durant and Al Horford this summer. And if you're Durant and you're trying to win a title and you're like, screw that. Like, let's say he gets bounced in round two. Let's say they just lose in round two and it's a really unhappy thing. And he's like, screw it. It's time for me to go. I, I want to go win a title. Where does he go that's a better situation than this Boston situation? Is that, a, is that the question? You're yeah. asking me that? That's I'm a asking you question. that. I'm at, that's a serious question I'm asking you. The, the answer is Golden State. The answer is uh, San Antonio. The answer is... San Antonio can't Clippers. afford him. Cross off San Antonio. The answer is Clippers, the Clippers. can't afford him. It would have to be a sign and trade with Blake Griffin. And... By the way, he's not. Way, it, let me just wait, hold on a second. Why is the Clippers a better situation than Boston? Um, <laughs> Chris Paul's going to be in his thirteenth season. I think the past twelve years, you have answered that question. What What is so good about the Clippers situation? They haven't even made the conference finals, and Chris Paul is at like in a Los Angeles. It's not Boston. Boston's That's a top six answer. market. Do you think that being in <laughs> Boston, you will never Bird? go back? You've said it. You're on record in the BS report, for, in did, the Bill Simmons <laughs> podcast, everything on the BSPN. You are never going back. I was in the East Coast for 32 years. That's the only reason I'm not going back. Well, that was enough. I'm going to go back. And Kevin at some Durant point. grew up in, in the in the DMV. You know, what? and he's not going to Boston. If we got Durant, I think I'd go back. I think that's it. I think I'd throw all <laughs> this away and just go back. Well, well, this is great. You you don't have to your your kids. There's no dangers that, that, that you're going to have to go back and do that to your kids. Because well, there is no scenario under which he's going to Boston. It's the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. It's not and the most ludicrous thing you've ever heard. I think it's important for you to continue to have dreams. By the way, I got on this podcast today, speaking of dreams, ready to, to explain the logic behind the Caps uh, winning the Stanley Cup this year after these radically unexpected events in my sports life. Yeah. The, 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 the Washington, D.C. Gruden's making the playoffs, Kirk Cousins. Uh, near all-star quarterback, the College of the Holy Cross, in the NCAA tournament, the Caps already surpassing the 100-point total. That's a delicious cash for Daddy House at um, some wonderful odds in, 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 a, in, a, in a future bet I may or may not have made back in October. Um, <laughs> there, everything's lining up. But, I supported but look, that bet. <laughs> you, you, you did not support that bet. No, the Caps. You made fun of me got, for that bet. No, you got Justin Williams. I'm going to read the text. I told you I'm that. I'm going to find got, that text and read it out loud. I told you I like Justin Williams, and that, and you got TJ Ashe. I like that. I like those guys. I thought that was. I you, thought you made fun of me for making bets on the Caps. I, the I, only reason I, I made fun of it was because the Caps are are just they'll, they'll never win a Stanley Cup in either of our <laughs> lifetimes. That's the reason I made I, fun of it. 
I understand. They're well, like guess the what? Browns the the, the Celtics are not getting Kevin Durant either. So we could have Kevin Durant, Al Horford, <laughs> and we could have the top five pick. What if we won the lottery? What, what, what if? We've got Ben Simmons, too. We well, well, three of those look, guys. Dream big. Dream big. Don't, 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 don't shortchange yourself. Let this dream go all the way out. Uh, well, I'll flip this around. If Kevin Durant doesn't come to Boston this summer, he's a flat-out coward. <laughs> and he doesn't want to win, and he doesn't take winning seriously. And that's, Stephen that's a. my Simmons. takeaway. <laughs> Stephen A. Simmons on the BSPN tonight. Kevin Durant, I know things about you. I'll come after you. <laughs> now, I, I do think... I, I'm going to throw one more thing as as evidence. You ready? Sure. Who was the only team in the 2007 lottery with the balls to take Kevin Durant and would have? The, the, what do you mean? The yeah, Celtics, Seattle. The Celtics of Boston. No, they would have taken Durant one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You know who knows that? Kevin Durant and his family. They know Danny Ainge <laughs> believed. Everyone else was taking Greg Oden, whose leg was two inches shorter than his other leg. I don't Danny think that's Andrews true. Like, I loved Kevin Durant. Here's another thing. A lot thing. of people love Kevin Durant. Why did Kevin Durant, why did he, I, I'm sorry, why did Danny Ainge get fined in 2007 by the NBA? I don't know. Because he went to a Texas game. He went to a bunch of Texas games because that's how much he loved Kevin Durant. One of those games, he sat next to Kevin Durant's mom, Wanda. And the NBA didn't like it, and they thought there was that that there was he had crossed the line of whatever rule there is where you can't talk to the pick before they enter the draft, and they find him. But that's how long he's known Kevin Durant's mom. That's a weird rule, by the way. Yeah. What's the What's the difference? Listen, Kevin. Durant, they don't have a. There's no relationship. It's not like it's the the NCAA with their ridiculous, you know, uh, no touch rules. Listen, Kevin Durant. If if you want to go to a team that's always believed in you, you know where we are. We believe since 2007. Freezing cold, you know. Oh, OKC is much better. OKC where they signed him and they signed James Harden. And I'm sorry, they signed him and they signed Westbrook to long contracts under the the, uh, impression that they would be trying to keep this dynasty together. And then they traded their buddy Harden right after they locked up the other two guys. Would you stay there if you were them? The whole playoffs yet to be yet to be played. We will we will have a lot more information about. All of these movies. Well, that's the thing. So what if they have a very unhappy round two exit? Then then things that we might not have imagined possible could become possible. I don't begrudge you dreaming big. I want you to dream big. If he goes to the Lakers, he he might as well just start dating whatever Kardashian's available and just go that route and just be like, I don't care about titles. Why would he go to the Lakers? I don't care about titles. I don't care about titles. I just want to live in LA and wear sunglasses and be cool. And I'll drive a Bugatti, and I'll be awesome. And I'm going to date Kendall going Jenner. To the Lakers. Well, that's that would be my takeaway if he went to Lakers. If he went to the Knicks, I, I mean, he would just have quit on life at that point. I, don't, I can't even imagine why he would do that. Where else is he going to go? You really think that Clippers? What 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 is appealing about the Clippers situation? Bomber's been a disaster. Bomber's like the non racist Sterling. I would say he's not going, but that's funny, by the way. Thank you. He's not going anywhere. He is going to re-sign with OKC. That's what makes the most economic sense for him, and that provides him the most options as all of the variables and uncertainties associated with this brand-new salary cap, this, this enormous uh, growth in, in, in the cap over this summer, a whole bunch of pieces will fall in place. The safest thing for him to do is to go ahead and max himself out, get that 10-year service under his belt, and be ready to go eat up 33% of the salary cap for wherever he, he wants to land next summer, All right. summer of 2017-18. Well, the Celtics have the best salary cap situation and the most assets, and they're already a top-7 team. I'm just pointing that out. They'll have a chance. They'll still have a chance to take a run at him next summer. They don't have to uh, push all their their chips into the into the center this summer. And for the record, nobody does. For the record, for for any asshole out there who's going to put this in a transcript in a blog post and try to make it look like I'm not objective, <laughs> um, I'm doing this as a Celtics fan. I'm not doing this as somebody who writes about the NBA and has been on the NBA show. This is just purely me as a Celtics fan laying out the case for why Kevin Durant should go to Boston, mm-hmm. and why if he doesn't go to Boston. That just tells me he doesn't care about winning. 
That's it. We've been we've been friends a long time. I I I, I yeah, mean this. Yeah, nineteen eighty eight. Um, as you know, uh, fairly as possible. When's the last time anybody accused you of being objective? Oh, that's a good point. I didn't think of that. I I tried I, to stay.